name is Jerry Fisk. We're at Nashville, Arkansas, here in my shop. My class in the sixth grade took a field trip to Old Washington, Arkansas. There in the Blacksmith Forge at Old Washington, there was a guy that had a fire going, smoke was going everywhere, there was dirt everywhere, he was dirty, and he made the prettiest, shinest, I had just never seen a knife like this, it was all shiny. And he took a board and he was chopping his board and he was doing everything my mother said not do. Don't play in the fire, don't get dirty, you know. I thought, oh, this is on to something. So after that trip, I went home. I, I made a knife out of wood, uh, stabbed my brother, or one of them, and then uh, uh, mother gave me a really good whooping over that. And I thought, mm, I'm on to something here. So to me, that was a, a, an awakening experience of something I had never uh, seen before. And uh, I would sit there with him all afternoon to watch him uh, sell those knives and whittle with those knives. And uh, so uh, it was worth it to me. It, um, I, I don't, and I don't know what it was, but it was something that I knew I wanted to do. My name is Lorraine Fisk. Uh, a lot of people call me Bob. I have nine grandchildren and they call me Granny Bob. <laughs> when Bob and I got married, the guys walked, uh, the knife makers that came brought their Bowie knives and like a traditional military wedding where they walk under crossed swords, uh, the makers brought their knives and so we walked under crossed Bowie knives. It's an Arkansas wedding. It's the Arkansas uh, official knife, and it, it was just appropriate. I, I couldn't do without my wife, Bob. We kind of jokingly say she's management and I'm common labor. <laughs> Jerry loves history. He, he can tell you any, any time frame of history, not just American history, but history of other countries. I, I use a lot of historical uh, materials, both steel, iron, and like, for instance, wood. This piece is from uh, Robert E. Lee's home place. Thomas Jefferson planted one tree in his lifetime. It was a tulip poplar. This is an unusual piece of handle material. It's a usik, which is a walrus penis. Uh, and just like everything else, they come in different sizes. This is wood from Patrick Henry. Give me liberty or give me death. To me, it's an important thing to uh, preserve as much as we can of our American heritage, as well combine that with the tradition of knives. I don't know if his knives are all that different because the traditional art of the way he makes it is, is the same from one maker to another. It's just that Jerry tries to put a story with his knives, with adding something historical. One of my friends had um, family in the Revolutionary War. They had a just a part of a gun that their ancestor had used at Valley Forge with George Washington. And I put 1776 layers in the steel and then the handle was a horse chestnut that George Washington himself planted. When George was president, he had the largest distillery in America and he made rye whiskey and uh, a peach brandy. And, and it's, it's costly, but when the knife comes with this piece of wood, uh, it comes with a bottle of George Washington whiskey. And uh, one of the guys asked me one time, he says, well, why does the whiskey come with it? And I said, well, when you give this much for it, you're gonna want to drink. <laughs> It's things like that that brings in um, a story. And everybody has a story. Everything has a story if you look well enough. For instance, this is a piece of uh, wrought iron. It came from a wagon wheel. Uh, the family itself was headed to the uh, 1849 gold rush. Uh, 
This is from the USS Cole with the terrorist bombing on it. Well, I got it from a civilian welder. I will not mention his name right now. <laughs> the spike, this is where Robert Johnson sold his soul to the devil so he could play the blues music. This is from a cannonball shot April 14th, 1864. This is uh, from building two of the Trade Center. When I go to museums, I can see a knife or a sword that's 500 years old. So every knife I make, I try to remember, is this the only knife I'll have that people will be able to see in 500 years? I want a story to go with it, and I want my name and work to go with it. And I want it all to be as good as I can make it. All my knives I've made, I try to refine them from actually getting out there and using them to see how I can improve it. And I have a little uh, field knife. I call it a Sendero. Most of the collectors say that's the second most copied knife in the world. And so I've become quite famous for that. This is a Damascus blade. Right now I'm, uh, I'm etching it in coffee. Uh, you can see the difference in the layers that I've got. Um, and the coffee is making the carbon steel part. When you make the Damascus, you have two different steels. The shiny steel that's here has nickel in it. So the coffee does not etch the steel with nickel. It will etch the non-nickel carbon steel and it will make it black. And so that's how I will develop and uh, bring out my pattern. The education portion of this is an important thing for me. One particular apprentice that he had was in Brazil, Ricardo uh, Villar. Through their skills and, and putting classes together, Jerry was kind of known in Brazil as the father of modern day knife making. The, uh, uh, I, I thought what it, it would be good to uh, just get together and cut and such. So you can use one of mine if you want to see how one cuts real good, but, but. <laughs> Uh, Ricardo Villar on the phone, and what we're doing, we're setting up a little cutting uh, competition, so to speak. Uh, it's very often we get together and compare uh, handle shapes, blade shapes, everything like that, because it's always good to have someone to bounce off of while you're having fun at the same time. the official results. Ricardo on the Mad Foul, five points. Mad Foul, zero points. And no, could you please repeat that? <laughs> <laughs> repeat that. <laughs> and on the card, Ricardo has zero points. Jerry has five points. Yes! I better quit moving my hand. This thing. Oh, no problem. Okay. Uh, on the mouse, Ricardo got the tail, three points. Sorry, Jerry. Zero I didn't get point. no tail. <laughs> so, no. If I add it up correctly, Ricardo has 170 points. Oh, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Maybe that was 17 points. <laughs> Jerry has 16. I have been wrong. Yes. I have been wrong. <laughs> but you have me. No. Okay. He let me win. He let me win. <laughs>